हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जर्नी विथ विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द टॉपिक नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस रिन्यूएबल एंड नॉन रिन्यूएबल बिफोर प्रेजेंटेशन आई वुड लाइक टू गिव लिटिल इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट माय सेल्फ आई एम विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव आई एव डन एम एस एग्रीकल्चर विथ स्पेशलाइज इन एग्नॉमी फ्रॉम जी पंत यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पंत नगर इन नाइनटीन एंड प्रेजेंटली वर्किंग एज ए सीड प्रोफेशनल इन वन ऑफ द एम एसोसिएटेड विथ सीड्स एंड पेस्टिसाइड इंडस्ट्री सो लेट्स प्रोसीड टू द प्रेजेंटेशन What are natural resources? A resource is anything needed by an organism or group of organisms. The sum of all physical, chemical, biological, and social factors which compose the surroundings of man is referred as environment, and each element of these surroundings constitutes a resource on which man draw in order to develop a better life. Resources which are not reproducible and are obtained from the finite non living reserves are called non renewable resources like coal and metals any materials which can be transformed in a way that is becomes more valuable and useful can be termed as a resource thus only part of our natural environment such as land water air minerals forest rangelands wildlife fish or even human population that man can utilize to promote his welfare may be regarded as a natural resource a natural resource may be defined as any material given to us by nature which can be transformed in a way that it becomes more valuable and useful for an example wood is used for making furniture yarn obtained from cotton is used for weaving cloth likewise various machines tools household goods are made up of metals now furniture clothes machine tools are more valuable than their raw form raw form like wood cotton and metal respectively it is impossible to obtain valuable items from any resources thus water minerals forest wildlife as well as human beings are resources any materials may be called as a resource provided and appropriate technology is available to transform that into more valuable goods the five basic ecological variables like energy matter space time and diversity are sometimes combinedly called natural resources here we have given the some examples of natural resources like solar energy soil coal birds plants oceans energy flowers minerals natural gas atmosphere oil fish trees water timber metals animals oxygen fossil fuels all these are constituents of natural resources here we have shown the diagram of resource classification the resources are classified in two categories first one is renewable resources and second is non renewable resources under renewable resources there are direct solar energy winds tides and flowing water while in case of non renewable resources there are fossil fuels metallic minerals like iron zinc copper etc and in non metallic minerals there are clay sand phosphates there are some resources which are known as potentially renewable resources like fresh air fresh water fertile soils plants and animals etc on the basis of continuity the resources are classified in two types first one is renewable resources and second is non renewable resources first one is renewable resources resources which can be renewed along with their exploitation are always available for use hence they are called renewable resources for instance forests are renewable if trees are felled for wood original forest covers may be maintained through planting new trees called forestation likewise solar energy and wind energy are examples of renewable resources second is non renewable resources the formation of some resources like iron ore coal minerals etc has taken several thousand years once they are used in unlimited way they cannot be easily replaced thus their exploitation at large scale will result in their fast depletion some such resources are called non renewable resources or exhaustible resources third is cyclic resources for resources there is no final use as they can be used continuously for example water used in industry and domestic always be cleaned and used again for similar or other purpose such resources are given the name of cyclic resources now to study forest resources the importance of forest resources can be explained as under first one is ecological balance 
forests and wildlife are essential to maintain ecological balance of an area second renewable natural resources forests are an important renewable natural resources third is ecosystem trees dominate forest ecosystem their species contain varieties in different parts of the world fourth economic development forest contributes to the economic development of the country because they provide goods and services to the people and industry fifth environmental quality the forest enhances the quality of environment by influencing the life supporting system sixth safeguard against pollution forest check air pollution and soil erosion thus they exercise safety and against pollution seventh soil conservation forest save the hill slopes from landslides eighth is forest role in wind erosion in deserts trees reduce wind erosion by checking wind velocity ninth maintain ecological balance the forest check pollution of air through increasing oxygen content of the air tenth attract rainfall by causing condensation of water vapor in clouds forest attracts rains eleventh control floods the floods are controlled because forest dry of rain water like a sponge twelfth supply of raw material forest supply wood which is used is under some examples of minor forest like canes gums resins dyes flocks medicines tannins like fibers cotton etc for tribal people these forests are provided with food like tuber roots leaves fruits meat from birds and other animals 13th employment opportunities about 8 crores people are employed in wood based industries like paper and match factories and small and cottage industries besides those who are employed in the forest department in various states here we have shown the forest resources in india total geographical area of india contributing 78% non forest area and 22% of forest area out of forest area nearly 9.7% area is having moderately dense forests 8.7% is open forest 2.5% is very dense forest and 1.2% of scrubs so these forests are playing important role to supply the wood requirement of our country now second natural resources are water resources water claims to be an important resource an important use of water in our country is for irrigation besides water is also required in large amount for industrial and domestic consumption what is the significance of water first one is it is revealed by the history of human civilization that water supply and civilization are most synonymous second several cities and civilizations have disappeared due to water shortages originating from climatic changes third millions of people all over the world particularly in the developing countries are losing their lives every year from water borne diseases fourth an understanding of water chemistry is the basis of knowledge of the multidimensional aspects of aquatic environment chemistry which involves the sources composition reactions and transport of the water fifth about 97% of the earth water supply is in the oceans which is unfit of the remaining 3% 2% is locked in the polar ice caps and only 1% is available as fresh water in rivers lakes streams reservoirs and ground water which is suitable for human consumption this picture represents the naturally available sources of water there are various sources like water reservoirs wells lakes glaciers rivers streams etc here we have shown the data analysis of water resources of total global water 96.5% is contributed by oceans and 0.9% other saline waters and fresh water is contributing only 2.5% out of fresh water which is 2.5% globally available glaciers and ice caps are contributing 68.7% ground water is contributing 30% and surface water is contributing nearly 1.2% out of available surface water and fresh water the ground ice and performerist is contributing nearly 69% lakes are contributing nearly 21% and in atmosphere there is 3% which is in the form of living things rivers swamps marshes and soil moisture etc 
Now to study about dams, we can classify the environment side effects of river valley and hydel projects into three categories like first one impacts within and around the area covered by the dam and reservoir, second downstream effects caused by alteration in hydraulic regime and third regional effect in terms of overall aspects including resources use and socio-economic aspects. The impacts caused by construction of dams and reservoir in including the following effects and consequences like first the various changes in the microclimate, second the loss of vegetal cover, third soil erosion, fourth variation in water table and fifth enhance seismic activities due to pressure of water. Now to study about mineral resources. We are getting the mineral resources through mining. It is often remarked that in our country most mining work has been unscientific. Consequently, no heed is paid to environment protection. The consequences have been distress like example, first they have developed large tracts that lost productivity and second there have been water and air pollution, dispolation of land and deforestation, noise and ground vibration problems. The some examples of mineral resources are like bauxite, barites, coal and lignite, chromite, copper, diamond, dolomite, gold, fire clay, fluorospar, gypsum, graphite, limonite, iron ore, kaolin, lead zinc, limestone, manganese, mica, nickel, phosphate minerals, tungsten, magnesite, kyanite, silmenite and other minerals like bentonite, corundum, calcite, fuller's earth, felspar, garnet, steatite, wollastonite, gycro, quartz and other silica minerals. So these are the resources we are getting from our soil resources. Now energy resources. Energy is the capacity to do work, produce motion or force or carry out transformations. It can be different forms like thermal energy, electrical energy, mechanical energy or chemical energy. The raw form in which the energy resources occur in nature are the primary energy sources like coal, petroleum, natural gas, wind, solar, which are converted into some intermediate form like steam or chemicals that are finally converted into usable or secondary energy like fuel, electricity, etc. Every development activity depends on energy. Therefore, energy resources and their uses directly influence national economy and growth of civilization. While energy requirement of primitive men were limited, the energy need in modern times have tremendously increased due to fast development, increasing transportation, industrialization, raised standards of living and rapid population growth. What are the types of energy resources? First one is conventional energy resources. Energy resources that are traditionally in use for all these years, particularly prior to oil crisis of 1973 are known as conventional form like coal, petroleum, natural gas, firewood, hydropower and even nuclear fission fuels. Second is non-conventional energy sources. These includes the alternate resources of energy that are being considered and commercialized for large scale use after the oil crisis. These resources are going to have increased share of energy use in future. These alternate resources are generally renewable forms including solar, wind, geothermal, ocean wave, tidals, biomass, biogas, nuclear, fusion energy, etc. A more appropriate categorization of an energy resources is based on its durability and regenerating capacity which classifies it as renewable or non-renewable. Third is renewable resources. These are those resources which can be generated continuously in nature and are inexhaustible like wood, solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, hydropower, biomass energy, biofuels, geothermal energy and hydrogen. They are also known as non-conventional sources of energy and they can be used again and again in an endless manner. Fourth is non-renewable resources which have accumulated in nature over a long span of time and cannot be quickly replenished when exhausted like coal, petroleum, natural gas and nuclear fuels like uranium and thorium. Now to study land resources. The land although appear to be available unlimited but in fact its judicious use 
would limit the availability of this indispensable life support system. In rural land use planning, concentration is chiefly devoted to creating and developing more farmland by removing forest and natural grasslands, channeling streams and irrigation and so on. Unfortunately, no efforts is made to save existing prime farmland from degradation by ill plant development. A nation's well-being is inextricably linked with the fertility and abundance of soil resources. Productive land is since the source of human sustenance and security everywhere at all times. These resources, because of mounting demands of swelling population and long mismanagement, would put in jeopardy are very survival of man. Now wildlife resources. Wildlife, it was once customary to consider all undomesticated species of vertebrate animals as wildlife. Birds and mammals still receive the greatest public interest and concern consistently higher than those expressed for reptiles and amphibians. Most concern over fishes results from interest in sports and commercial value. The tendency in recent years has been to include more life forms under the category of wildlife. Virtually everyone appreciates the aesthetic value of natural beauty or artistic appeal present in animal life. Giant pandas, bald eagles and infant harp seals are familiar examples of wildlife with outstanding aesthetic value. To define as the uncultivated flora and the undomesticated fauna among us the plants and animals or any form existing in nature surroundings provides aesthetic recreations and economic benefits. For maintaining the balance of nature, wildlife plays an integral part. In biodiversity of life forms, India is the second largest country in the world and Africa stands first. This picture represents the forest and wildlife resources where we are saving the forest lands and different types of animal creatures. What are the basic reasons for the extension of wildlife? First one, destruction of their natural habitat due to expanding agriculture, urbanization and industrialization. Second, overgrazing by domestic animals that convert the area into deserts. Third, hunting or poaching on a large scale for meat, fur, ivory, etc. as a commercial exploitation. Fourth, export of some species. Fifth, an unbalanced sex ratio. Sixth, some species are narrowly restricted to an area. And seventh, natural processes are also cause a decline in the population. Low population may external and new population colonizes when death exceeds birth rate. So this was all about natural resources which are renewable and non-renewable. Now my presentation ends here. Thank you very much. I have given here my YouTube channel details, Journey with Vijay Kumar Srivastha. Having request, please visit the channel, subscribe it and provide your kind and valuable feedback. Thank you.